camera wiggles. Can't tell I have a thing about the camera wiggles, can you? It really annoys me. Anyway, busy day. Didn't get anything done, but busy day. <laughs> Had the thought to talk about a pet peeve of mine. And I have two other subjects. I did not get them written in my book, but I did get them written down. Pet peeve of mine. Some people's idea of poverty is my idea of wealth. When you have a friend who, or an acquaintance, who actively and repeatedly and deliberately states that you're on the same income level. You're just as poor as they are. They're just as poor as you are. They're just as middle class as you are. You're just as middle class as they are. Whatever the designation is. But the reality is, I don't smoke. I don't do weed. I talk a lot about alcohol, but we don't actually drink that much. I've got a bottle of scotch that I've had for 12 years. So you might hear me talk about scotch. You might hear me talk about whiskeys, but we're talking half a shot at a time. We don't drink that much. And the other person will have two very large dogs. Both people, both adults in the household smoke, go to Starbucks three to five days a week, smoke weed, drink alcohol, and eat at Applebee's and Red Lobster and places like that regularly. We have the same income level. No, you got three to four thousand dollars more a month than me. You're just living poor. It's a pet peeve when somebody tries to claim the same income level when it's obvious at a glance that it isn't. When they try to claim that that street cred, basically, when it's obvious. You know, I once had somebody who was holding a purse that it was a, a brand name, two, three hundred dollar purse, wearing brand name shoes, wearing brand new pants, wearing a brand new sweater, holding a giant mega Starbucksy thing in their hand, smoking a cigarette. Tell me they were on the same income level as me when Michael was working public service, which was one step above minimum wage, and having to work overtime just to get anywhere. That, that's a deal breaker for me. The other one is somebody who will claim that they're doing art and then show 150 finished products overnight at a skill level they've never demonstrated before. I will give you that they may have learned it 20 years ago, blah, blah, blah. They may have the skill set. But when they go from I have nothing to look at all this finished product, I gotta wonder where the kit is and how much the kit cost. Or the order from, from Wish or Alibaba, AliExpress. These are pet peeves. Now, if Carmen, hi, were to show up and say, I have the idea that I think I'm going to paint dragon eyes. I need 150 of them done by Thursday. And I'm starting out with toilet paper tubes and watercolors and some food coloring. Okay? I know for a fact she's going to knock it out of the park and there's going to be 150 dragon eyes that are amazing, just stunning, make me jealous dragon eyes because she's good. Because she's demonstrated the ability in another project in the past. But if somebody hasn't demonstrated any skill set and suddenly they have finished products, I know they're ordering them. Yeah. I've ranted about that before, so I'm going to I'm going to let that go at this point. The other two subjects that I have are Okay, I'll just go straight over to this other one. Pricing. We buy a lot of stuff on clearance. We buy a lot of stuff pennies on the dollar. I will go out of my way to go to auctions. I will go to auctions, not online auctions. 
I will buy clearance lots. I will go into a store and they'll have a, a bunch of stuff and I'll, I'll flag the manager and say, hey, if I buy them all, how much? And we buy a lot of clearance stuff. And we bank that clearance stuff. And people in our life think that we're hoarders. An example is these scarves, okay? If you like nice little rayon scarves, okay? Nice little rayon scarves, you know, head scarves. I can get an order lot of these at a dollar each, okay? Direct from Russia, dollar each after shipping. These are my samples. I'm probably going to buy a hundred of them as soon as we have some money. I think the order is a hundred. It might be two hundred. Anyway, so I show up with a whole bunch of scarves and somebody thinks, well, you only paid a dollar for them, therefore they're only worth a dollar. No, no, no. Because if I want to replace this, you can't see the glittery gold to this, but the yellow is a gold that glitters. This is gorgeous, okay? This has got a metallic sheen. It's transparent. Can you see? Yeah, you can see through it. Okay, this is gorgeous. And to get it for a dollar is below production cost, let alone shipping costs. And if I had to replace this, if I had to go to the mall and go find, uh, it's a navy black blue, you know, that, that, that peacoat blue, with gold shimmer in this beautiful pattern, you're looking at $12.95 to $17.95, depending on whether or not I go to, to J.C. Penney's, which I'll never shop at again, that's another story, or Nordstrom's, okay? It's not a dollar. Just because I paid a dollar for it does not mean it's a dollar because you have to figure replacement costs. So what I have here is when you're making things, when you're buying things to resell things, you have to consider your time and skill, your time and energy, your connection, okay? If I buy from this person and I fuck them over, I'll never be able to buy from them again. So it's not just this scarf, it's all the other things I might be able to buy from them in the future. Okay, and I want to buy from them because this guy is importing samovars. Okay, and not modern samovars, antique samovars. And he's importing antique china. And I want to buy from him again because he's got some amazing textiles. Okay, so I don't want to screw him over your time and your skill or your connection. You've got to figure that in. If I blow all these out at a buck twenty-five and he loses his market, because I went to the farmer's market, I bought a thousand from him, and I went to the farmer's market and now nobody's interested in them because I burned out the, the entire region, he's not going to work with me again. Perceived value. What do people think it's worth? You walk the aisles and you see what other people are charging. If everybody else is charging $15 and you walk in charging 5 bucks, A, you're going to piss everybody off, B, you're going to piss in the well, it's not cool. On the other hand, if everybody else is charging $15 and you walk in and charge at $35, don't expect to have much business. If you want to sell it all at $5, you go vendor to vendor and you say, hey, I'm selling wholesale lots. And you might be able to sell it all to vendors. Replacement cost, already addressed that. Let's say I'm making clay beads, and somebody says this bead should be 35 cents. Well, it's not that good a bead. It really wasn't. I mean, some of my beads are brilliant, and some of my beads are ugly. But they all have the same base cost, which is the clay. And the clay is between 235 and 299 for two ounces, period. Maybe two bucks for two ounces if you get it on sale with a coupon and all that. You can't sell cheaper than your replacement costs. So take your brick of clay and make things and then weigh it after firing because it loses a little bit of weight and see how much it weighs and figure out that's your minimum cost. What did it actually cost to make? Okay, so I'm making beads and I'm using gold foil on my beads. Well, that gold foil is two bucks a sheet. A roll of beads uh, that the cane I make makes about 10 beads at the medium size. So that's 20 cents right there. So now your 35 cents worth of clay has 20 cents worth of gold and now you're 55 cents for the bead and the person's still looking at you going, yeah, but I'm still not paying more than 35 cents. And you're like, that's fine, go away. Go away. I'm not selling it below what it costs me, let alone my time. Okay. 
and then just in general what do you feel it's worth okay if somebody said hey I really like these scarves if you can get me an order ah, I dropped something if you can get me an order on these at a dollar fifty a scarf I'll buy a thousand of them from you and I'm out of the Vancouver area so it won't Bellingham area so it won't affect your business then I do it because fifty cents a scarf on a thousand scarves is worth my time and energy but if somebody says I want you to mail me five scarves these are my samples I need a hundred dollars so five scarves ain't gonna get me a hundred bucks you know or if you want to buy catnip charms from me, well, if you're in person, you buy them in person. But if you want me to mail them to you, you need to buy more. Because that mailer costs $10. You know, going to the post office, the time and energy, the postage, that's all an extra cost. And somebody will say, well, you sold, the, sold it to her for a dollar. Why are you selling it to me for $2? Because she walked across the room to talk to me, but you waved at me and expected me to come talk to you changes the price substantially. It's been 11 minutes. I have another topic on here that I'll talk about another time. That was my rant. I'll talk to you later.